So dear Dharma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. So we're going to start our ongoing meditation session now. So keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line, your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and focus your mind to this bell sound, please. So while you're focusing to the sound mentally, relax your body, relax your mind, relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So bring your attention to your body, please, and scan head to toes three times yourself and say Sopatveva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning, we're going to relax our body step by step, following my words mentally. Relax your body, please. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes. Relax your ears. Relax your nose. Relax your upper lip. Relax your lower lip. Relax your chin.
relax your whole pace muscles. Relax your teeth. Relax your tongue. Relax your mouth. Relax your throat. Relax your neck. Relax your shoulders, arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your whole back muscles and relax your spine. Relax your chest and relax your abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs, relax your heart, relax your liver, relax your kidneys, relax your cold blood. relax your pancreas. Relax your small intestine. Relax your large intestine. Relax your whole abdominal organs. Relax your butter. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. So relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows, and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles.
So bring your attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. Deeply and gently breathing, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. So now allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. And when it happened, just recognize this is inhalation, this is exhalation. Do nothing extra. So allow your inhalation, exhalations happen naturally itself. If your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again. Bring a little bit more attention and observe the entire continuation of the inhalations and exhalations. Knowingly, this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end of the inhalations or exhalations.
each and every inhalation and exhalation unique. It has its own character. Sometimes it becomes longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. So just recognize itself. So bring your attention to the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. Just observe the inhalation, exhalation and the change happening moment by moment. See how your body change moment by moment. following the inhalation and exhalation. So your inhalations and exhalations is a body reaction. Because of the body you experience the inhalation and exhalation. So how the body happens? Body is the result of the karma. Or the volitional. So how the karma happens? 
because of the desire with the contacts or the feelings. Why the desire happens? Because of the self-centered mind. Why the self-centered mind happens? Because of not knowingly reasons. why we can't see the reasons. Because of disturbed mind. How your mind get disturbed? One is desire for satisfaction with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. The one is the resistance. Another one is laziness, tiredness, lethargic mind. Another reason is comparison. Other one is the doubt. We carry everything ourselves. As a result of that five, hindrance, we can't see the truth as it is. As a result of that, you have self-centered mind. When you have self-centered mind, you have desire. When you have desire, look for the contacts or the feelings. As a result of that, karma rise. When there is karma, there is a repetition. As a result of that, your body arise again and again, moment by moment. So your inhalation or exhalation happens again and again. It is not the outside effort or the reasons.
your body happen again and again following the path of the karma. As a result of that, you experience your inhalation and exhalation. That's why it's called it is a bodily action. So reflect to yourself again and again. how your body experience the inhalation exhalation Bring my attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars, reminding yourself like this, With clear intention, mentally, repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe and may their hearts be filled with joy.
May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so pray low strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward, and upward. To all six directions at once like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So dear Dhamma practitioners, long time ago, far away, in a Chinese village, there was a 
doctor so that he used to mix uh, medicine and create poisons so actually this is story coming in this uh, acupuncture lessons because as you know acupuncture help to balance the energy so this is uh, one story that one doctor how he going to give a lesson how you can balance the energy sometimes so he used to mix poison and one day he make he create a poison and then he went out of the home during that time what happened his children everyone gathered and drank that poison so when he come back and he saw everyone kind of like uh, went crazy and uh, suddenly children told oh father we made a mistake and we drink that poison we didn't know it is a poison but now some of us cannot hear some of us cannot see some of us cannot walk some of us cannot talk so like that they had a different different symptoms so what the father did father create another medicine to reduce the power of the that poison and they made a medicine with the nice smell and good color and with the good taste and gave to children the children who drank little bit poison suddenly they took that medicine and drank and they got cured and then some of children refused that even though it has a good taste good color and good smell but still they refused to to drink it so there are some made some poison and once you take it it change your mind so the father knew that is not that child that because of the poison they took it effect for their mind the mind go crazy so then even though the the medicine is good look good and have the nice color nice smell and the good taste but still mind don't want to accept it refuse that so then what the the father tried somehow to give this medicine to children so, but some of children refused that and they telling no no we don't don't we are okay we will be okay so then father made the medicine and then he told to children so this is the medicine and i going to go to another village another land for to see a, another patient so take care yourself until i come back so then the father left and then within few days there was a message message came the father died there and the people uh, the, the children didn't believe that their father died like that but suddenly what happened when the when they hear the message suddenly that all the the crazy children who got crazy the the mind because of the poison suddenly jumped to the poison the, the medicine and start to drink and everybody drink the medicine and got cured and the very next day father came back and then everybody shocked and was so happy to see the father and but us oh yesterday someone came us and told you died and the father told sometimes to give a solution to cure someone 
and somebody need to die. It is a great, it is a deep philosophical idea from ancient time to today in different, different generations, different, different cultures and traditions. This story has different ways. But when it comes to your life, remember, sometimes you yourself, there are things, why it happened to like that, uh, why it happened to us like that way, mostly. Because when you start to find the comfort, security regarding somebody or something, and sometimes you don't want to let go that security or the comfort. But if you don't let go it, you're not going to experience life. So if you're not experiencing your life, that's mean you kind of like you already did. It's like if you don't think or if you don't look ahead yourself, if you caught up in habits, even you live hundred years, you kind of like dead. So then you have to remember, sometimes there are situations come, you have to let go to experience your life. And at the same time, sometimes you have to move and you have to go away from others and to experience yourself, your own life, and sometimes you have to give a space for others to experience their life. And also, until we die, sometimes people don't recognize what we're saying or what we're trying to do. Even as parents, husband, wife, children, sometimes yourself. Until you die, they're not going to recognize who you are. Even look at the world. Sometimes people died after 100 years. Their memory come back and their people find out their things, their, what they said. And uh, then they start to appreciate that person after 100 years. So there are many stories like that. But when it comes to yourself, always remember. So Buddha also the like that. So Buddha, they gave this beautiful dharma to all of us to get cured out of this poison. So we already have that poison inside us. That is why we have the desire. That desire, it always going to take us to this kind of experience, not beyond that. So then you have to remember, before you die, if you are able to to get this medicine and get cured yourself and you no need to worry about anything. But if you miss this opportunity, maybe you cannot guarantee where you can find this medicine again. And even maybe if the poison become so strong, what will happen? Maybe your mind will corrupted and maybe mind cannot recognize the poison, the, the medicine as medicine. So then you have to remember yourself, whenever there is opportunity to practice and listen to Dhamma and even yourself to develop some kind of profitable skills, don't let it go. Get that opportunity and use that opportunity. Get the best out of your time and your life. So with that, during Buddha's time, there was a monk called Mogaraja. So this, this uh, story called the Mogaraja Sutta. So this venerable Mogaraja came to Buddha and had a very beautiful discussion. So what the discussion, there was this venerable Mogaraja asked from Buddha, venerable sir, people believe things, people follow things, People appreciate things. So by like that appreciating, by that believing, by that following, is there any way people can gain something, how it can happen? So then the Buddha explained in day-to-day -day life, 
that whatever that we follow, we believe. The mostly we think that it is a kind of like the outside qualities. But we follow something, we appreciate something, we, we believe something, it's not because of this outside. It always happened because of our inner qualities. So then you have to remember yourself. And sometimes we follow people. Sometimes we follow gods. The, in Eastern countries, we have different, different kind of gods. And different, different kind of statues, different kind of believing systems. But mostly you follow hearing and thinking that they are outside qualities, that whatever they have done or whatever they are capable to do, so like that. But there is a deeper, inside there is a deep reason within yourself. And if you don't see that, and maybe you keep following, keep following, keep following this outside, and unknowingly what will happen, you're nourishing your inside. So, that whatever the, you criticize the same. And maybe mostly when it comes to criticism, we look outside qualities, we point out reasons. Oh, it happened this way, he did this, she did it like that. We reasoning outside reason. But remember, even to criticize somebody, reject somebody, resist something, there are some inner reasons within yourself so maybe you, if you don't see it, what will happen? Unknowingly, your inner reasons going to become stronger. So if you do that way, your mental formations or the defilements or the sanskara roots hold it to this suffering become stronger. So then you have to always look when it comes to any experience. Remember, there is a reason within yourself. That's why that you experience it. So then what the Buddha said. Then the, the Venerable Mogaraj asked, Venerable Sir, what is the right things to, to believe or follow? Or what is the right, the idol or what is the right things to worship? Because out of that, whatever you worship, your inner quality is going to become stronger. As human beings, we know our life depends on qualities. Even in a very ordinary life, we name people, we select people, we categorize people according to their qualities, according to their inner qualities. So then yourself the same. So then when it comes to practice meditation, or your prayers, or your whatever you believe, and you for your chanting, you have to look, is there anything that you already have in your mind? Are you looking something out of that chanting, out of that prayers, out of that meditation? Is there anything that you're trying to become? So if that if you have that kind of intention, it always belongs to, to sanskara or mental formations. So that is the very dangerous place that you have to be clear. Because what the Buddha said in this sutta, that if the, the king is so generous, if the king is the good, good king in front of people, if the skillful king in front of people, other people cannot recognize this is the king. So that is the, the, the one of the, the, the way to live as a king in a smart way not because of the special jewelries, not because of the costumes, not because of the guard, 
So like that. And he don't get any kind of danger threaten out of the people because the everyone have the comfort and at the same time everybody doesn't have the anger regarding the king so when it come to yourself how you can apply this simile so look in your family whatever you do if you you do believing Maybe you are the husband, you are the wife, you are the, the child, you are the parents. You are the brother or you are the sister. You already, you already develop kind of like uh, you are depending on the idea. So you depending on that idea and then you do things according to that. We call it a kind of responsibility in the conventional life. So the thing is this, you do something as husband or wife or the children, parents, and according to your position. And once you do it, the receiver, don't accept it in the same way that you want. If the receiver don't recognize it the way you want, what will happen? You will get disturbed. You will get disturbed out of, not because of their reaction. You will get disturbed because you already hold it to mental idea and you do things based with that idea. So this is a very, very, you know, sharp place that you have to, to see. When you do something as parents, you do something to your children. And then you know, oh, I am the mother, I am the father. Oh, I do this, I did this. If the child, don't recognize or don't accept or don't know. Just imagine the child doesn't know. What is the meaning of father or the mother? How that child can respect to you or how that child can react to you as you are the mother or the father the, as uh, his mother and father. How that child can react? Because that child doesn't know the meaning of the mother or the father. But when you do something, oh, I am the mother and the father, you already position. You, hold, you already hold it to a place. So then what will happen? Remember this, that according to this Sutta, they said that if you recognize this, you know, you, it's kind of like you, you, find the, you, you find your freedom. So it's like this. If the child doesn't react to you or respect to you, or if the child don't that accept it's kind of like you're from, it is from the parents. You get hurt. You get hurt not because what the child did. You get hurt because you hold it to position. You are the mother, you are the father. So you can apply it to anything. Once you hold it to a position or once you hold it to a mental idea, once you hold, once you hold it to the center, what will happen? That the position or the, the, the center that you hold going to give the pain, going to bring the disturb, not whatever the outside reactions 
but mostly in day to day life look we always say oh she did this he did this so like that we always go with the outside and that will take us to to do many other unnecessary things we hate people maybe and uh, maybe we going to blame to them and then we go with the some kind of unnecessary physical actions see the, because thinking he did this she did this but when it come to that you are in that the position that you hold deeply inside you don't see that but if you release that position and if you do something and according to necessary conditions and situations if you do the right things to the 100% the best that you can remember whatever the outcome come it not going to disturb you it doesn't matter whoever you are maybe conventionally of course we need the names and positions but deeply personally you have to practice to go beyond that personal position that you hold it's more than the responsibility it's a more deeply you you live in the life and at the same time out of that life you gain your inner freedom but what happening we live the life but out of that life we create a prison we create positions we create kind of like a action reaction result never end so that's why the what the buddha said in this mogaraj sutta if you able to worship somebody that uh, not belong to name and form or not belong to any kind of ideas or the positions and that's mean you also going to gain that qualities and if you start to follow somebody that whatever belong to truth and whatever that uh, belong to clarity that's mean inside you you also start to grow the clarity or the truth so then remember yourself in day to day life whenever you have opportunity don't look the qualities that don't follow the qualities or don't start to hold it to qualities whatever that outside world exist believing it is outside always remember when you look something and when you recognize oh that person have this quality that person have this quality that's mean it's already inside you so then in day to day life you have responsibility to rescue yourself little by little not overnight little by little little by little remember deeply get your mind out of the the positions or the self centered mind or the self centered idea that you carry and when there is opportunity for you and start to do without the self centered intention self centered mind and uh, even as a husband or wife or children parents and you do things but little by little get out of the idea of i am the husband i am the wife i am the child and i am the parents or i am the brother or the sister slowly release that and start to do your best whenever you have opportunity and then you will see after you done it you find so much freedom rather than out of that action you will create a prison if you create a position what will happen it will take you to the prison
so don't create your living prison and start to get out of this it is not in the outside world it is within ourselves so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbitiyo vajjantu sabrogo vinasatu mate bhavatantarayo sukhi digayuko bhav ittavata cha ammi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabb sampatti siddhiya sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabb sampatti siddhiya sabbe satta anumodantu सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया पुण्य कमया सब दुखा